In this video, I'm gonna be telling you what these were like in a race. What is up everybody and welcome to Race HQ here at 40 Runs. Now, before we start, before we do anything, have you subscribed to this YouTube channel? No? Maybe think about it because on this channel, we don't just do shoe reviews, we do challenges, we do race day vlogs, we do loads of other cool stuff, including our live stream, which comes out every Friday, seven o'clock UK time, is also a podcast. So make sure you subscribe before you leave us today. Right, with that plug out of the way, let's start talking about these. Okay, so uh, weekend just gone, I did the big half in London, which is a half marathon, uh, quite a big deal over here in the UK. It's usually slotted in before the London Marathon. It had a a decent elite field as well. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's the best course in the world. I, think I found it extremely boring and extremely irritating. But that said, it was a good opportunity to try these out over a race. Now, I'm umming and ahhing about whether to use these in one of my upcoming marathons, and I'm still a little bit undecided. But I think by the end of this video, I'm going to let you know whether we're going to pull the trigger on these for either Amsterdam or London. Okay, so if you don't know about this shoe, it's the uh, Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 3. It's got like the longest name in the world. They need to shorten it up a little bit. Um, but they have some made, for me, some big improvements on this shoe uh, versus the previous version because I couldn't even run in the previous version uh, because it was just too unstable. But we've got Cellemesh 2.0, Light Strike Pro. We've got um, the Energy Rod System 2.0, which is now all linked up. So it's not a, a carbon plate like you'd get in a next percent, for example, but you've got the energy rods that are working here. See that? Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, that's probably about it. In, in, if anything else, uh, you've got the continental rubber, which provides plenty of traction. Uh, Betty there up, up. Not a gusseted tongue. The worst lacing system in the world because it's a nightmare to get these things tightened up and the most pointless pull tab on the back. But I am a fan of this shoe. And it surprised me, and hopefully you've seen some of the videos uh, about this shoe that I've made, because it has really surprised me. Uh, I was sent these by a friend of mine, um, and I've been really, really surprised how well I've got on with them. Um, so let's talk about the race and how they felt, and then we'll come on to that decision at the end of the video. Right, okay, before we do that, have you got a pair? Let me know in the comments, have you found them? Have you raced in them? Let me know, have you tried them in a the marathon? Be very interested to know. So, um, 13.1 miles, one hour, 40 minutes. Um, I was a little bit fatigued towards the end of the race. I don't know whether that's because I've had a bit of a dodgy tummy leading up to the race. I think it could be an element of that. But um, the first 10, 11 miles, I was feeling good. Uh, we was running, we because I had Simon with me for a little bit, but we was running between 7 and 7 30 per mile um, and the shoe felt great um, in those early miles it was pretty effortless i didn't have any um, issues in terms of like arch Ach uh, achilles rub achilles rub size or anything like that one of the things i would say which is annoying about it but i don't know whether that's because we we got going quicker than we thought we would but uh, the lacing i still can't dial the lacing in it was still on my right foot just it just felt that little bit not locked down bad english but you know what i mean uh, so i'm still struggling with the lacing such an over complicated system uh, it drives me nuts but it's, it was breathable i was getting good feedback off of the shoe um during the race up until a point i'll come on to that in a minute uh, but it felt stable and at that pace i felt like i was in control um, yeah, I felt like I was in control of what was going on underneath me. It does give me confidence, the fact that I can hold pace because I was doing it. My splits were okay in the first 10 miles, let's say. Um, and yeah, it was pretty consistent. The, 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 you know, you could feel the, 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 the light stripe pro working with the, the carbon rods, you know, giving you that nice propulsion. Um, the more I got on my toes to get on it a little bit, the more it came to me uh, in those earlier miles. And yeah, it just, it just felt a nice cruiser while I was out there over that 13.1 miles. But here's the thing, when I got to about 10 miles, 10 and a half miles, I was, do I push on, do I don't push on? Um, Bear in mind, I've got London, I've got Amsterdam coming up, and I was like, mm, I'm not sure, not sure. And I, I tried to step on it a little bit, but the shoe didn't... Oh, no, this is maybe a bit unfair. This is probably more me up here than anything else, right? But the, sh the shoe didn't give me the feedback like, come on in, let's go and have a go at this. It, 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 and, the, and the reason I mention that is because if I was in my next percent, right, not Alpha Fly, my next percent, I know, because I know that shoe, I've run in enough pairs of them now, 
that would have been saying to me, no, come on, Foldy, let's, let's get on this. That Zoomex, that, that rebound that you get from that shoe, there is a reason why, you know, Mo, so Mo Farah won the race in those shoes, uh, apart from his paid millions from Nike. But it, there's just something about that shoe that's always egging you on to run faster. And that's the thing with this. I didn't get that feeling of wanting to run hard, now again, a lot of this might be up here, right? So, okay, make it out what you will. But there was there was just that that lack of secret sauce on that final stretch in a race. You you if you've done any form of you know endurance event where you're trying to run a time, you'll know what I mean. Where you're in that last slog and you want to try and pick it up because otherwise, if you don't pick it up, you're going to fade. And at next percent just seems to come back at you. It just seems to say, yeah, come on, then, let's have a go at this. Let's see what we can do. Um, but with these, it, it, it just, the, and this is not a negative about this shoe, this shoe was just quite happy to cruise along at the pace I was at. Um, and that's say, that's not, a, that's not, you know, knocking the shoe in any shape or form because over the marathon distance, I think you want that. You want to be able to cruise. Uh, you want to be able to hold speed. And that's why, I've always said I love the Alpha Fly because that shoe is able to hold pace and just cruise along like a big SUV. And this was very similar, actually. Um, and that's that's a big positive I can give it is the fact that it did kind of hold speed a little bit like the Alpha Fly. But in those final sort of miles when I wanted a when I wanted to probably push on, but I just was sort of arguing with myself up here because there was no crowds or anything to cheer you up. Uh, yeah, I, ju I just ended up drifting off in the last three miles, and I think a lot of that is, d is down to the fact that I didn't have anything underneath me that basically just wanted to go hell for leather. So yeah, I think that's that's probably a good assessment of where it was at with the, with racing it in the big half. I am actually gonna, I think, I'm 90% sure I'm gonna run this in one of my marathons because it felt good over those first 10, all oh, right, a marathon's a completely different animal, right? But I did feel good in that first stage of the event, up to 10 and a half. And to be honest with you, over the 13 miles, uh, I felt good. And, and it's a compliment to the shoe. I didn't have any side effects from wearing the shoe that I'm aware of. Um, and, and yeah, it, ju it just held speed. So I think, I don't know which one I'm going to put it into, but I'm definitely going to wear it for one of them. Does that make any sense? So uh, whether it's London or Amsterdam, I'm not sure yet, but I think we're going to put this into play in one of those marathons. So there we go. That's how we got on with the Adios Pro. Thank you, by the way, to everybody who um, was asking me on the way around that race how I'm finding it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, it's always nice to, to, to see you guys, bumps into you guys out on course or before and or afters or whatever. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Adi Zero, Adios, longest world, uh, world's longest name, Pro 3. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do with it in a couple of weeks.